What's up guys, it's BD here and welcome back to the second part of building my new gaming PC where I show you guys how I pick my parts and how I build my PC. And then in the third part, I'm gonna show you guys what didn't work, what worked and what I'm gonna be swapping out for some new parts. And then in the fourth and final episode, I'm gonna be showing you guys my entire setup and what I'm actually using because I know a lot of you guys out there want that updated 2019 version of my setup. You guys wanna know what these two LED bars are as well. <laughs> you know, I've been keeping that one. I've been holding that one tight to the vest. Enough talking, let's get into the build process step-by-step step of how I make my PC. All right, so I like to start off with the motherboard and the CPU installation first because they're, they can be a little bit tricky at times and so you wanna get that out of the way first. It's like a snowball. You wanna do the hardest thing first and then everything just kinda snowballs and gets easier as you go on through the build. So what I like to do is I like to place the motherboard on top of the non-static plastic that it comes in just as a base to work off of. Now motherboards usually come with a little protector on the processor part, so you wanna take that off and that's that little black piece that I'm removing here. Now that the protector of the CPU is off the motherboard, now I can install the processor. What you wanna do is there's a little marking on the bottom side of the processor. It's this little triangle and you wanna just match that up with what's on the motherboard. Once the CPU is in place, you're gonna wanna pull down the lever and lock it into place. Okay, next we're gonna take the Arctic MX4 thermal paste and we're gonna put a pea-sized amount onto the CPU in the center. The thought process is once you put the CPU cooler on it, it's gonna spread over the entire CPU so you don't have it spilling over the sides from having like a lot of excess. So this is my least favorite part of any build that I do and that is putting the bracket for your CPU cooling. And the reason why it sucks is some of the methods like the spring methods on the CPU coolers that some companies use is pretty bad. So right here, I'm just adding brackets onto the posts of the bracket from the backside. And uh, we're gonna put this on either side of the CPU. See here, I'm fumbling a little bit. I told you I hate it, so here it is. <laughs> So anyways, you wanna get these nice and squared away. Make sure they are level with each other and they're exactly the same on each side. That's very, very important because you don't want your uh, CPU cooler to be slanted. I've run into a lot of problems with this in the past. Now here I'm just screwing those brackets on the front into the motherboard to make sure everything is secure. Next up, we are gonna put on the CPU cooler on top and make sure not to move this around too much. You don't want that thermal paste going all over the place. And then you wanna match it up so that you can then tighten the screw into the brackets on the motherboard. I gotta give it to Oris because this CPU cooler, the ATC800, was actually really easy to install. Easier than any other CPU cooler that I've ever installed before. So I gotta give my hats off to them for doing a great job on the design of the brackets and things like that. Because sometimes, as you see, these springs right here on some of the more popular ones, the cheaper ones, they are really, really hard to screw down and you gotta use some force sometimes and it almost feels like you're gonna crack your CPU. It's crazy. Next up, we are gonna install the USB cord from the CPU cooler and the CPU fan into the designated CPU fan slot on the motherboard. So I just tucked away the cords there on the CPU cooler just to keep everything nice and tidy. Now we're gonna move over to the RAM. Next, you wanna match up the pins on the RAM before you put it into the motherboard. And uh, for RAM, you wanna put these in the opposite slot or every other slot if you're doing two sticks and you wanna just fill up every single slot if you're doing all four, of course. I mean, it's kind of common sense. 
Next, we're gonna find the pins or the posts in the case, and we're gonna match it up with what's on the motherboard so that we can screw in and secure the motherboard into the case. Next, you're gonna match up the IO with the back side of the case. Uh, this sometimes can be a little bit tricky. Sometimes you get like one of those little back plates and this is another part that I hate because they never really fit flush for me. But this one, what I like about the Oris motherboard is that it actually has it built in. So there's no more of that popping off or trying to press it in or force it. It just is already in there for you, which I really, really like. And then from there, you can just screw in all of the screws onto the motherboard, securing it onto the case. Once that is done, what I like to do now is install the power supply because you wanna power everything and make sure the cables are nice and tidy before you do your whole build and put in your video card, which is humongous, and putting in your hard drives. You wanna get all this in there first and see how everything routes. I personally like to plug in almost everything because you're gonna need your SATA drives, you're gonna need power for that, you're gonna need power for your motherboard, you're gonna need power for your video cards. Um, so there's a lot of things that are gonna need power and maybe when you expand in the future, you don't wanna reopen and take out your power supply and place it back in. So I like to just have those cords and if I'm not using it, I just tuck it away in the case until I need it. Next, you're just gonna wanna screw in your power supply into the case. Next, I like to find out where my motherboard's power is gonna be going to so I can route the cables from the power supply. I find that this keeps everything nice and tidy so you don't have cables going everywhere by trying to do your hard drives first and it just gets too tangly and too crazy too fast. So next, we're gonna pull the power supply cable through the casing, through the designated hole, and that's gonna go straight into the motherboard. It's gonna be that big, thick boy. That's where that one's going, right into the motherboard to power it, and that's gonna be the main source of power for your motherboard. Next, we're gonna get the power cords at the top for the top of the motherboard as well. So you're just gonna place those through, Pull them through it's really hard it's really cramped up there so uh, you really have to just bear with it it's a little bit annoying but once you get it it's done and there's gonna be two of them up there so yeah it gets cramped really really fast and here we have it the finished product with the two power cords going to the top and on the side Next up, I like to take care of all the cords from the casing that includes like the USB ports on the front of the case, the HD indicators and all that good stuff. Here we are plugging in the USB 3.0. And then we have these little guys that you have to plug into the cramped side of the motherboard here at the bottom. This part is a real pain, although Oris does include a G block, I think it's called, and you can just plug that into that and then it makes it really nice and neat. It was a little bit hard to show because it's so cramped in there, but um, it, it's everything is indicated with the name and you just match it up with the pins on the motherboard. So here I'm just showing that I'm pulling through the cables on the back side of the case so there's no slack and there's no cables making your case look unesthetic when you have that window and all the RGB going on inside. Next up, we're gonna install the NVMe into the PCIe slot. Simple as that, you just slide it right in there and then we're gonna put in the graphics card. Now what I found was that they were too close so what I had to do is I took out the hard drive and I put it into the lower PCIe slot so that the video card has some room to breathe. Now that we got these big, thick RTX cards, we now have these little stands that help with the slack because they are so, so heavy, they're so powerful. So it's pretty cool they put a little stand there to help it from slacking. And then from there, I'm just gonna route the power cords for the video card into the case and then into the video card, simple as that. And then I'm gonna pull the slack on the back side to keep it from slacking again. Now all you have to do is plug in the power cord into the computer and your beautiful baby is alive. Oh yeah, look at that thing. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, guys, well, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed that tutorial. If you guys already built your PC and you just watched because you wanna support the channel, you guys are some real ones. Thank you guys for sticking around for this long at the end of the video. Uh, giveaways are gonna be soon, so if you haven't joined the Discord, I would join the Discord ASAP. The link is in the description, do not forget. And I also Twitch stream, and if you're a Twitch sub, I'm gonna be giving away some of my keyboards, some of my own personal keyboards very very soon so make sure you are on twitch and the discord all right guys that is my time thank you guys for watching it has been your boy bt saying peace Thank <laughs> you.